Dear viewers, welcome to the YouTube channel H2O Chemistry. I am Satya Narayanan, your chemistry teacher. This channel mainly focus on the students, those who are learning chemistry. The chemistry concepts taught conceptually and properly. The examples what we give will be very interesting so that the learning process will happen smoothly without any stress. Now, in this uh, video we are going to talk about the concept called compounds. A very important basic term we use in our chemistry that is we call, we call con compounds. So what do you mean by compounds? So the compound is a pure substance pure substance important it is a pure substance which is made up of two or more kind of uh, atoms two or more kind of atoms the compound is made up of two or more atoms so the fundamental unit of compound is atoms so it is an it is a matter, so it uh, has a definite shape and it occupies volume. So, there are millions and millions of compounds known so far. You could see, a example, you could see paracetamol, acetic acid, copper sulfate, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, plenty of compounds we know nowadays. The discovery of many compounds is still going on every day. You can see some of the examples, the paracetamol we call paracetophenol and the acetic acid we use in our laboratory and the copper sulfate crystals and our table salt sodium chloride. These are the examples of the compounds. So when you find two different kind of elements which are bonded together, we can call them simply as compounds. Now, each compound formed by a chemical combination of two or more different elements, each have different shape and structure. This is a very important point. We have to be clear with this. You could say, look at this picture. It indicates water. See, the oxygen is at center and uh, hydrogen is attached like this. You could see the inverted V, right, shape or else bend shape it is. What do you call? Bend shape. So the shape is unique for the water. Similarly, look, look at the carbon dioxide. Carbon is at center, oxygen on the either sides. So this is a linear structure we call. So carbon dioxide structure. Look at this, another one that is ammonia. N is at the center, H, H, H. So each and every compound has different shape and its structures important the two or more elements combine in a fixed ratio by mass so I need to teach two important ratios one we call atomic ratio another one we call mass ratio what do you mean by atomic ratio we will see in H2 in H2 how many hydrogen we have there are two hydrogens how many oxygens? Only one. So the atomic ratio will be 2 is to 1. Very simple idea it is. You could say the simplest ratio 2 is to 1. There is one more ratio, fixed ratio by mass. Very important. So in terms of mass, we have to express this ratio. Now, totally how many hydrogens we have? So during this reaction you could see, when uh, two moles of hydrogen reacts with one mole of oxygen, it gives two moles of hydrogen. So the atomic number of hydrogen is atomic number of hydrogen is one, mass number is also one. So the atomic mass of hydrogen is one. So there are four hydrogens, two into two, four. So four into one, four. The atomic mass of oxygen is sixteen. There are two oxygen. So when you multiply two into sixteen, we get this thirty-two. So is there any common number to divide? Yes, absolutely by four. We divide these two numbers by 4. 4 divided by 4, 1. 32 divided by 4, 8. So, what is the mass ratio here? 1 is to 8. 
1 is to 8. It is a fixed ratio by mass by which the hydrogen and oxygen combines to make water. To make water. You could see the ratio by mass 1 is to 8 here. So this is what you have to understand. Atomic ratio is very simple. How many number of atoms we have? If you take the ratio, that's called atomic ratio, 2 is to 1. Whereas mass ratio, we have to find the mass and then we have to simplify the simplest ratio we call ratio by mass. Now, these are the examples. Now, what are the other informations? Classification of compounds based on the origin. The compounds can be classified into two major classifications. One is inorganic compounds, another one is organic compounds. Wherever you come across this word organic, which means life, which, signific which signifies life. So, when any compounds are derived from living source, for example, plants, animals, those compounds are called as organic compounds. Whereas, when any compounds are derived from non-living things like rock, minerals, we call them as inorganic compounds. So, the word organic means life, inorganic means no life. So, the compounds derived from inorganic source like rock and mineral, we call them as inorganic compounds. The compounds which we obtain from living organisms like plants and animals, we call them as organic compounds. From examples of uh, inorganic compounds, chalk, calcium chloride, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate and washing soda, sodium carbonate are the examples of, some of the examples of uh, inorganic compounds, whereas organic compounds, if you see proteins, vitamins, carbohydrate are the, some of the examples. Now, this is a one type of classification based on origin. There is another type of classification based on the physical state. You could see the classification of uh, compounds based on the physical state. Compounds in solid, compounds in liquids, compound in gaseous form. Compound in solid, you could see the silica, silica is a SiO2, silica, silicon dioxide, nothing but sand, it's made up of silicon and oxygen, made up of silicon and oxygen. Similarly, potassium hydroxide, K, potassium hydroxide is which is made up of uh, KOH, potassium, oxygen and hydrogen. Sodium hydroxide, which is otherwise called as caustic soda, see this caustic potash is used in the bathing soap manufacturing. Whereas this uh, caustic soda is used in the preparation of washing soap manufacturing, which is made up of uh, sodium, oxygen and hydrogen. Look at the next one, copper sulphate, otherwise called as blue vitrol. Blue vitrol, the color of this uh, copper sulphate is blue. You could see the picture, copper sulphate blue in color. Now, which is made up of copper, sulphur and oxygen. The next one, zinc carbonate, calamine, very important one, it is a body, it is used in the body lotions, body lotions, zinc, carbon, oxygen, these are the components, these are the elements combined to form this compounds, that is, a, I have the example, some of the examples of compound in the liquid state, now, water, well known, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen are the constituent elements, which combined to make water. Similarly, hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydrogen and chlorine, and nitric acid. These are all available in liquid form. HNO3, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Sulfuric acid, acid H2SO4, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. It's otherwise called king of chemicals. Next is acetic acid, we call vinegar. So, which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen three different elements combined to form this acetic acid. So, which is uh, mainly used for uh, pickle to preserve vinegar. So, now the next will be compounds in a gaseous state. Carbon dioxide, well known. It's carbon dioxide, CO2. One carbon and two oxygen. So, the constituent, constituent elements are carbon and oxygen. Carbon monoxide, the same carbon and oxygen are the constituent elements. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur and oxygen, you could see the formula, SO2, methane, CH4, carbon and hydrogen. 
nitrogen dioxide n and o2 ammonia nitrogen and hydrogen mnh3 so in our previous video we have discussed about it we prepare ammonia by haber process now these are the some of the examples of compounds in self solids and uh, comma liquids and uh, gases now let us see some pictures about this silica sand potassium hydroxide otherwise called caustic potassium you could see the picture and uh, sodium hydroxide caustic soda the flakes you could see copper sulfate blue in color and zinc carbonate calamine very minute one which is used in the body lotions the next one compounds available in the liquid state water hydrochloric acid nitric acid sulfuric acid you could see uh, add always uh, water then you add sulfuric acid to water so that's the correct procedure that's what they are doing it next is acetic acid which is a vinegar we can say so the compounds in gases see almost uh, all the almost 90% of the gas are colorless so i couldn't find any picture regarding this um you could uh, see all the gaseous compounds we discussed are colorless here now now i hope this video you could uh, find it some of the examples and uh, some idea about compounds this will be very useful in your future classes learn it understand it don't mug up don't buy god anything so just understand so you could when you repeatedly study the words what we discuss it will come to your mind you can able to understand hope this video will be very helpful in understanding the concept called compounds thank you my dear children do subscribe for more videos click bell button the chemistry concepts made easy here thank you